Jonathan's a very nervous boy. He's easily intimidated. We had to put him in an institution. You follow her the night she was killed? I followed her. Came to meet her. Paperweight. Got a guard at the hospital. I've got a guard at Joanna's trailer. But that's not going to discourage anybody who's determined. <laughs> The story was on page four, small paragraph at the bottom. Former captain of detectives found dead on beach. Suicide, probable cause of death. It's a strange feeling looking at the photograph of a friend you're told is dead. Seems to bear no resemblance to it. I haven't seen Frank McDonald in four years, but one thing I knew about the man, he would never have killed himself. As soon as the hospital phones with Nesbitt's condition, I want to know. Not this morning, Orwell. You know about Frank McDonald? I know about it. What's this? Statement from the household, six of them. No one saw anything. Terrific. I don't think he committed suicide. A body was found on the beach. There were no footprints near us. He was killed with his own gun, here. His fingerprints and only his fingerprints were found on the weapon. His veins were running with alcohol. There was no note because there was no one to leave it to. Does that answer your question? Oh, except what? I want to know why. What about the robot? Nothing so far. Is there any evidence that anyone was with him last night? Orwell, does the name Walter G. Nesbitt mean anything to you? He was an industrialist responsible for the oil and the, the old man was shot at last night on the grounds of his estate. Unknown assailants. Within two hours, I had four of his vice presidents on the phone, every newspaper in the city, and the captain. Before lunch, I will undoubtedly be speaking with the commissioner. The last person I need to see at this moment is you telling me Frank McDonald couldn't have killed himself. I'll ask my own questions. Oh, well. I have my... Go. 
sorry he's dead. I liked the guy who was a good cop when he was sober, which wasn't very often. Yes, I know, I remember. Have you been down to see that place he rented on the beach? I meant to. Well, that's the end of the line for a guy like Mac, the bottom of the bottle. I can't make simple suicide into a murder just to shift the blame. He was headed in that direction. You know that. Hey, God, I don't know anything yet. We can hardly be held responsible for a gas explosion, sir. What were those numbers again? Right. I've got those. Go on. You were going to call me. That was six months ago. I never said I was prompt. Uh, Harry, whatever it is you want, it's out of the question. Frank McDonald has his number. I want to know the phone calls you made last night. That's no way. I could lose my job. Yes, sir. Right. I will give it my immediate attention. I don't want you to tap his phone. I just want you to give me the numbers he dialed last night for old times. Harry, we didn't have any old times. Let's talk about new times. Yeah, old dinner on the beach, candlelights, uh, champagne, things like that. I won't hold my breath. I have to break our date tonight. I... Harry Orwell. I... 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 Is that the list? What about the champagne and candlelight? Tonight. Tonight is the night. Well, I'm busy tonight. Tomorrow. There were four calls made from this number last night. I've written down the list of the subscribers. Alcoholics Anonymous, Ralph Costello, Walter Nesbitt, and Harry Orwell. I'd heard it ringing, but I didn't answer it. A voice from the past, maybe asking for help. Maybe wanting to be talked out of suicide. One last word before he pulled the trigger. I felt as if I'd pulled it myself. If you want to go, that's fine. Nobody's holding you here. I'm not ready for this, Barney. Not this time of day. You will be, Paul. You will be. The meeting doesn't start for about 20 minutes. Is this your first time here? I'm looking for somebody that knew Frank McDonald. I knew a Frank M. Same one I saw in the paper this morning. You don't seem surprised. I'm not. Frank was a loser. I think Frank just came to the meetings uh, for the company. Anyone in particular? Stella, I guess. They latched onto each other. Everything went fine at first, but then Stella started to slide back fast. She was taking Frank with her, too. Oh, where could I find Stella? Let's see, 1030, yeah, they're open. You'll find her in a bar, probably the Rat Pack out in Santa Monica. Thanks. What'll be, bud? Is Stella here this morning? Yeah, down the corner booth like every morning. What's she drinking? Screwdrivers. Give me two more. May I join you? Why? I'm a friend of Frank McDonald's. Frank is dead. I'd like to talk about him. How did you find me here? Well, I ask about you at AA. I'm Stella Christian. Harry Orwell. Hey, bud. I ain't no cocktail waitress. Here your drinks. What can I tell you about Frank? He was a wonderful guy. Were you close? As close as two drunks ever get. We met here sometimes. Took walks on the beach. Sometimes we take a ride up the coast. Ever go to his house? The relationship wasn't that close. Did he seem different to you the last few days? 
He seemed upset. I put it down to withdrawal. He'd been off the booze for over a month. Did he tell you what was bothering him? Why do you want to know all this? The newspaper said Frank killed himself. Isn't that true? Well, I like to keep an open mind. You think he was capable of killing himself? Yes. Well, I knew him. I don't think he was that type of guy. When did you last see your friend? A few years. Well, he may not have been that type of guy once, but that's the type of guy he became. Where can I reach you? Right here. All the way over to the Nesbitt estate, I wondered why Frank would have phoned there on the night of his death. The same night old man Nesbitt was shot. It made me a little nervous calling on $20 million. They'd probably throw me out. But then I saw Lieutenant Trench's car, and I knew I was in good company. Lieutenant Trench is in the living room. Can't you people come at the same time? Everything that can be done is being done. Thank you very much, Mrs. Nesbitt. We'll be in touch. Roberts, I feel a chill wind. Someone is walking over my grave. Ah, Orwell, what are you doing here? Frank McDonald called here last What did he call about? I don't know. I thought I'd ask Orwell, Mrs. Nesbitt. when you can show me the connection between an oil magnate and an alcoholic ex-cop, then I will reopen Frank's case. Until then, stay on the beach, Orwell. Repair your boat. In all likelihood, Mrs. Nesbitt does not wish to speak with you. But I do. I want very much to speak to you. Won't you come into the living room, Mr. Orwell? Goodbye, Lieutenant. Sergeant Roberts. In case you're wondering, Mr. Orwell, I'm Walter Nesbitt's second wife. That's Walter and his children from his first marriage. Would you like some iced tea? No, thank you, no. Uh... I've been trying to reach you all morning. This arrived by special delivery this morning from someone I've never heard of. He mentions you. It was Frank's writing. He told Karen that her life might be in danger as well as her husband's. And if she couldn't get in touch with the sender of the letter, then she should get in touch with me. The sender of the letter was dead. Ask your husband what happened the night Angela Thomas was murdered. Signed Frank McDonald. Does Angela Thomas, does the name mean anything to you? Only in whispers. I've heard Amy, our housekeeper, speak of her. She said she was beautiful, angelic, almost Madonna-like. From... The way Walter spoke of her, I think there may have been something between them. Oh, what did happen the night she was murdered? I only know that she was working late here at the house. Tell me, why would something that happened eight years ago put me in danger? Came from up there somewhere. A high-powered rifle, telescopic sight, 250, 300 yards. It's a little far for an accurate shot. Isn't Not it? for a marksman. Housekeeper must have crossed in front of Mrs. Nesbitt just as he pulled the trigger. She's lucky she wasn't hit. How long has the housekeeper been with the Nesbitts? 32 years. How's Mrs. Nesbitt no. now? Shaky. Oh, well, what? just as a matter of curiosity, why was Mrs. Nesbitt so anxious to talk to you? Oh. I mean, if you have information that uh -huh. I don't, I'd appreciate yeah, being here. kept in the Read picture. It. Frank thought all the Nesbitts were in danger. Want to kill them all, huh? Starting from the top, working down. Where are the children? Well, I talked to Joanna Nesbitt, the daughter. She's at the hospital uh, visiting her father. Her son. Lieutenant? In an institution. Lieutenant, look. Institute? Three expended high-caliber shells. Brow of the hill. Owner of the property saw no one. OK, Roberts. Take him to ballistic. Where are you going? Am I under arrest? No, 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 no. I'd just like to know where you are at all times. I'm happier in my work that way. Did you want to tell me where Joanna Nesbitt lives? I suppose she's anxious to talk to you, too. Well, I wouldn't know that until I talked to you. She's married to an attorney. If you ever picked up on a drug charge, she's a good one to get in touch with. He lives in a trailer on the beach. Ralph Costello. Oh, well. You know, withholding information no. in a murder inquiry is a fun... No, there was a guess. 
Just let her enough evidence to reopen Frank's case? He asked for a connection between Frank McDonald and Walter Nesbitt. That's a connection. Is it? Is it? I'll think about it. Ralph Costello had been the fourth person Frank had called that night. I knew his reputation, but not what he'd married into. I was a little surprised to find him living in a trailer until I met him. Mr. Costello? Yes? Well, my name's Harry Orwell. I'd like to talk to you a minute. I usually see clients at my office, Mr. Orwell. Come in. It's be awfully important if you track me down here. Have a seat. What can I do for you? You know a Frank McDonald? Never heard of him. He phoned you last night. What time? Around 10 o'clock. I wasn't here. I got one of those phone recorders. Uh, maybe the phone call's recorded on it. You, you didn't hear it. Ralph, whose car is that? Oh, sit down, honey. Uh, would you like a drink? Nothing, thank you. Oh, Mr. Orwell, this is my wife, Joanna. Mr. Orwell wants to know about a stranger who phoned here last night. I was about to explain to him that we get a number of crank calls. All lawyers do, particularly in my line. I don't pay any attention to him. It, it wasn't a, a crank call. Look, we just found out there's been a shooting in the home of my wife's family. Yes, I know. I was there when it happened. And maybe that machine recorded who or why. Presumably the bullet was meant for Karen. There'd be a certain poetic justice in that. Ralph. You don't like Mrs. Nesbitt. I don't like the way she went after the Nesbitt family and took what was rightfully Joanna's. All right, Ralph, drop it. Mr. Orwell isn't interested in family feuds. Just what is your interest, Mr. Orwell? Well, I, I'd like to hear what's recorded on that machine. It's important to me. Costello, my, my name is Frank McDonald. Your uh, wife, Joanna, and possibly yourself may be in great danger. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll come to see you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. He never arrived. Yeah, no, somebody killed him. Or he killed himself. Uh, what did he mean by your life might be in danger? I have no idea. Um... Now, could you leave us alone, Mr. Orwell? I'm sorry to be rude, but I'm, I'm still very upset. I'll be, I'll be with you in a second, honey. This is a man, McDonald. What has his death got to do with the Nesbitts? Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I'm trying to find out. Well, I'm sorry I couldn't be of more help to you. Say, uh... Can you tell me where you were last evening? Why do you ask? Police will. I was walking along the beach. Anyone with you? I was alone. Is that what you wanted to hear? Mm. Just wanted to hear the truth. Both Ralph Costello and his wife, Joanna Nesbitt, seemed pretty upset about the shootings. Well, that was normal, and it could have been genuine concern. But then again, it could have been an act. One thing Costello said bothered me, but I knew where to go for the answer. Hi. Mr. Orwell, I'm so glad to see you. Say, could you call me Harry? I had a school teacher once who called me Mr. Orwell. That was because she didn't like me. I forgot things. I... Was it pretty? Yeah. I think you saved my life today. Thank you. I talked to your stepdaughter. She's very upset. I can imagine. I'm sure she wishes those bullets had found their mark. If your husband had been killed, who would inherit the estate? Not Joanna. Huh? Walter cut her out of his will two years ago. Not a penny. It was the day she married Ralph. It was his wedding present. Yeah, well, I can see why your husband might not think of Ralph Costello as being a good Nesbitt. They loathe each other, especially since the court decision. Court decision? Ralph fought the disinheritance, brought a suit against my husband. Senility and incompetence. He wanted Walter put away. He lost the case, of course. Walter is neither senile nor incompetent, and more than a match for Ralph Costello, for any man. 
Harry, I'm glad you came to see me. You know, I just wanted to say hello, see how you were. I'll be back. Bye. What I didn't say to Karen was that if all the Nesbits were eliminated except Joanna, the estate would automatically go to her. With or without Joanna's knowledge of cooperation, Ralph Costello had a lot to gain. Now, that's the theory I had for Trench. The trouble is there are times when I want to speak to Trench and times when Trench wants to speak to me. But somehow those times never seem to coincide. Oh, well, don't talk to me unless you're going to say something I want to hear. Ralph Costello. He had motive and opportunity. He has no alibi for last night. His wife, Joanna, was disinherited by her father. He fought and lost a lawsuit to reverse that decision. How am I doing? Not bad. He's also in debt, heavily. Two years ago, he was the golden boy on the drug scene, but times are changing. Costello can't change with him. Maybe he's just trying to get back what he thinks he and his wife deserve. I'll tell you something else. Frank McDonald called Costello. Now, maybe after the phone call, shot the old man, went down and finished off Frank. Where are you going? Where are you going? When we get there, all well, I'll ask the questions. I like to keep in practice. Well, you know how you get to Carnegie Hall. Practice. to Joanna's car. She was meant to have been the victim. Ralph Costello was lucky he survived the blast, but now he was no longer a suspect, and I was right back where I started. I don't know what I expected to find at Frank McDonald's house, but it wasn't what I saw. It's like this when I got here. Somebody was sure looking for something. Now, Jean, I just can't believe that Frank committed suicide. I can't either. This is the first time I've been down here. Frank didn't want me near the place. I hated to think of him living like this. Did he visit you often? No, oh, from time to time. Really to see the children. But he didn't stay long, never overnight. So how are you, okay? I'm a stayer, Harry. I just hold on and wait out the rough patches. When's the last time you talked to him? Oh, he phoned me the day before yesterday. He was very excited about something. A new development, he called it. Something about new evidence and a uh, case being reopened. You mentioned which case? No, but he was sure he was on to something. I think he was looking for a way back into the old life. I don't know why I came here today. Pick up a few things, scrapbooks. I don't know why I kept these, really. Keep in touch with the past, I guess. I know. I'll come back to the show. The late 50s. Mm -hmm. So Stella Christian was once Stella Nesbitt. You know, every path I walked away from Frank McDonald's death, I encountered a member of the Nesbitt family. Now, the key had to be in the past in Angela Thomas's murder. Theory number two for Trench. Ah, Orwell, come in. I've been expecting you. Have some coffee. I'd like to look at the file on the Angela Thomas murder. 
It happened eight years ago. You don't need to. I've already done it. What you want to know is Frank McDonald was the investigating officer. That's the link you've been looking for. Tell me about it. Nesbitt and his secretary were working late. She decided to walk home. A few minutes later, Nesbitt heard the sounds of a struggle, a woman screaming inside the house. He took an old 38 revolver out of the desk drawer in his study. He ran down the outside passageway. He found Angela's body in the hall. Her head had been crushed by a paperweight. He saw a man running down the hall to the front door. He shot him. His daughter called the police. The prowler was identified as uh, Bill Henderson, a Navy man with a record for violence. Been a robbery? No. Henderson was leaving for Europe the next day on his ship. He had some story about making visits to the Nesbitt household on previous occasions, having an affair with Mrs. Nesbitt. Mac thought the whole thing was ridiculous. He dismissed it. Open and shut case. But nobody actually saw Henderson kill the girl. No. Kind of interesting, isn't it? He was convicted on circumstantial evidence. Second degree murder, he's serving a 20-year sentence. Well, he's about due for parole, isn't he? Roberts! Nesbitt murder case. Bill Henderson, check him out. See if he's still in prison. We've got a 24-hour guard on the house. I've got a guard at the hospital. I've got a guard at Joanna's trailer. But that's not going to discourage anybody who's determined. How's Joanna taking her husband's close call? Not very well. How about the father? How's it with him? On him, it appears to have a tonic effect. He's being discharged from the hospital tomorrow morning. What'd you find out? Bill Henderson, released on parole last week. Well, there's your motive, revenge. But why? Karen Nesbitt wasn't even around eight years ago. But Amy North, the housekeeper, was. That's where we went wrong. Put out an APB on Henderson. You gonna reopen Frank's file? It's already open. Oh, well. I appreciate what you've done, but now stay out. We'll get Henderson. It's our job. Next time, you might try and kill you, and that would make me very unhappy. Oh, well. I'd seem careless. You make lousy coffee. Don't drink it. Somehow, Frank McDonald must have known that Henderson was going to be released from prison and go after the Nesbitt family. Henderson had gotten to Frank and killed him before he could blow the whistle. He'd waited a long time for this, all those years in prison with nothing to think about except revenge. But why? Revenge may be sweet, but more often than not, it satisfies the appetite of the innocent, not the guilty. There was something about all of it I didn't like, something that didn't fit. One stray piece of the puzzle that I couldn't quite lay my hands on. This is Mr. Orwell, Walter, the man who was with me yesterday. Mr. Nesbitt. I understand you saved my wife's life. What were you doing in my home? Yeah, well, I was investigating the murder of a friend of mine, Frank McDonald. Does the name mean anything to you? Well, he was the officer in charge of the case when your secretary, Angela Thomas, was murdered. Angela was killed eight years ago. Yeah, I know the past is way of catching up with this. Uh, Bill Henderson was released on parole last week. I think he's the man that shot you. I want to know if you're sure he's the man that murdered your secretary. He was running away from her body. I know, I read the reports. Where was the rest of your family at the time? My daughter Joanna was downstairs in the library. Your son? My wife, Stella was sitting up with him. She used to read him stories late into the night. How old was it at the time? Eighteen. Jonathan's a very nervous boy. He's easily intimidated, rather disturbed by life. We had to put him in an institution. Well, your 
You're convinced, then, that the right person was convicted for the murder? Would you see to my wife's safety, Mr. Orwell? I'll be glad to pick you up tomorrow morning. I'm scared, Harry. Stay with me for as long as you can. You're a, a very... Very kind, considerate, loyal, trustworthy, honest, straightforward, yeah. Walter is a strong, patient man. I married him because I couldn't imagine life without him. He needs me now. And his son? He talks to me more than to anyone else. I've been very worried about him. I tried to call him the night that Walter was shot. But he disappeared from the institution. He wanted back a few hours later. He was very disturbed. He couldn't say where he'd been. Or who he was with? No. You don't think that... Well, well why didn't you tell me this before? Why well, I didn't think it was that important. Walter told me not to. Well, where is this uh, institution? Come in. Yeah, he visits them on occasion. He was out at uh, Christmas two years ago and Easter this year. We've done all we can for Jonathan, but he's almost a hopeless case, Lieutenant. Paranoid schizophrenia, occasional periods of remission. Excuse, excuse me. Is that Lieutenant Trench? Yeah. May I speak with him? Well, if you wish. Thank you. Now, Trench, you don't need to question the doctor. The information you want is that Jonathan was out of the institution two nights ago, wandering around all alone. Nobody knows where he was, including himself. Oh, well, uh, I thought I told you to stay out of this. Are you there snooping? Or are you there for some kind of treatment? Uh, Trench, if there's anything further I feel you should know, I'll call you. Terrific. Surely the police don't suspect Jonathan of a shooting no. his own father. No, they don't. How is Walter? Mending well. Say, Doctor, uh, what else can you tell me about Jonathan? Well, not much more than uh, Mrs. Nesbitt could tell you. Over the years, the boy has become very religious, fanatically so. We had to bring him into the Catholic Church. He has a statue of the Madonna in his room. Well, is it possible for me to talk to him alone? If it's all right with Mrs. Nesbitt. Well, yes, of course it's all right. Jonathan? Jonathan, my name is Harry Orwell. Been to see your father in the hospital. Oh, yes. He's going to be released tomorrow? Yes. Do you know why he was in the hospital? He's old. Your stepmother's worried about you. She's very nice. Yeah. Sometimes she brings a book and reads to me. You like girls? Have you ever been out with one before? You remember Angela Thomas? She was beautiful. Like a Madonna. Yes, just like that. Sometimes we would talk, you know, just to pass the time, a day, and we'd discuss philosophy and religion, and uh, she understood so many things. I, 
I didn't even have to speak to her to feel good. I, I just see her. Sometimes I would follow her. You follow her the night she was killed? Jonathan? Did you follow her, Jonathan? I saw them through the French doors. My father. I wish you'd spend the night. I'll try to kiss her. I'll try to kiss her. I need the air. Walked away through the house. I followed her. Came to meet her. Paper weight. Picked up. from a dead man. It was Stella Nesbitt's diary. Gary Orwell. Hello, Harry. This is Karen. Can you meet me right away? Jonathan's been kidnapped. He was marched out of the institution at gunpoint. Walter and I had just gotten back from the hospital when we heard. Henderson's call came a half hour later. How much does he want? $100,000. Henderson said we all had to be there, including Amy and Stella Christian, Walter's first wife. He said if we call the police, he'd kill Jonathan. They must be inside already. He said 11 o'clock. It's just past that now. generation of integrity, a financial and social byword in their community, perjures everyone. He formed a conspiracy of silence that lasted for eight years. All I had to live with was the knowledge that I was innocent. Hey, you know what really happened that night. I want you to tell me. I'll tell you. Angela and I were working late that night. I asked her to stay, but she insisted on leaving. Angela, this whole situation with Stella is really becoming untenable. I'm going to have to see my lawyer in the morning. Now, look, you know, I've always been terribly fond of you, and, and Jonathan adores you. I don't see any please, reason why... Please, let's not talk about this again. I just don't want to, okay? Please. I wish you'd spend the night. I've, I've got a great deal to discuss with you. How can you ask me to spend the night? You know I can't spend the night. At least let me give you a ride home. 
I don't want to ride home. I'd rather walk. I need the air. Jonathan up to his room. Wake your mother, tell her what's happened. She's been sitting up with Jonathan all evening, reading to him. That's the story that will be told to the police. Angela surprised a prowler, killed her. Jonathan must be protected, no matter what the consequences. And then the police came. I knew one of you killed the girl. I thought it was you, Nesbitt. But looking at your son, at what's becoming your son, I'm not surprised. Take the money, it's all here. Just let my son go. <laughs> Did you really think I was gonna let any of you leave here alive? Do you think you can buy back eight years of my life with $100,000? <laughs> Drop the gun! I like your style, all well. Uh, a little theatrical, perhaps. So, Mr. Nesbitt, you all right? Yes, thank you. Ms. Warren? Yes. Of course, we'll have to talk about Angela Thomas, but that can keep for another day. I told that story under duress. There was no truth in it whatsoever. My son isn't capable of murder. Your son will be sent back to the institution. There's no reason to torment an already tormented young man, but you and I will have to talk. I understand. Thank you. I always suspected the truth about Angela's death, but I never really knew. Well, you don't know all the truth. When you do, don't be too hard on your husband. He was just trying to protect his son from a crime he thought he couldn't help but commit. I don't understand. Yeah, you will. All the truth, all yeah, well? The man it. just confessed. He confessed to what he thought happened that night. And you know what happened. Eight I, years I, ago. I kept asking myself, how did Bill Henderson find Frank McDonald to kill him? And if he did kill him, why did he try to make it look like suicide? He had nothing to fear from Frank McDonald. Stella? Stella? Stella, did you know that the Frank McDonald you met in AA was the same Frank McDonald that was investigating the Angela Thomas murder? Of course I knew. Frank told me. When did you know? Well, as, as soon as he found out that... Bill Henderson had been paroled from prison. He was concerned about my safety, for the safety of all the Nesbitts. He was right. Yeah, well, he really couldn't have known that until he found your diary. Now, in here, you admit to having an affair with Bill Henderson. So he wasn't Prowler. He had no motive to kill Angela Thomas. He did have a motive for revenge. Do you want to tell us about it, Stella? Huh? Bill and I met in one of the servants' bedrooms. He had called to say that he was coming over. That night of all nights, his ship was sailing in the morning for Europe. I had to wait till he was asleep. I 
thought that note was from you. I want you out of here tomorrow. I won't stand for it any longer. Stand for what? You and Walter. Oh, come on. You're a fine one to talk. How are things in the servants' quarters? I know it's bothering you. Walter's talking about changing his will for a new Mrs. Nesbitt. And if he does, I may just consider it. Stay away from my house. If anyone's going to leave here, it's going to be you. found Angela's body, Jonathan was kneeling over it with the paperweight in his hand. Both Walter and Joanna must have thought that Jonathan had killed her. That's when Walter shot Bill. Take Jonathan up to his room. Wake your mother, tell her what's happened. She's been sitting up with Jonathan all evening reading to him. By the time Joanna reached my room, I was already back in bed. And she had to wake me from a deep sleep to tell me what had happened. Well, any time you need my help, don't hesitate to call. When Stella realized her diary was missing, she knew Frank had enough evidence to reopen the Angela Thomas murder. So she uh, drove out to the house and killed him. She tried to find the diary, but she couldn't find it because he'd already mailed it to me. It was Frank's renewed sense of purpose that killed him. Does that make it better? Nope. Thank you, Harry. Come by sometime. The kids would love to see you. Sometimes I think about packing up and going on a fishing trip in the mountains. You don't see many people there, rich or poor. But then I'd be worried about who might phone me the next night. A voice from the past asking for help. Frank hadn't lived very far from me. I guess I should have visited him.